Hello, Charles here for MGN TV, and today I'm reviewing Kena, Bridge of Spirits. A game I've personally been anticipating for quite some time, with a slight hint of worry given that this is Ember Lab's first game, as they were primarily an animation studio. But I'm incredibly happy to report that that worry was misplaced. Ember Labs have done an absolutely phenomenal job here. So straight off the bat, it, it's quite clear that visually, in terms of art style, this game is fantastic. And I'm a strong believer in art is forever, graphics are, are not. While this game numbers wise has some issues, which I'll get to later, art direction is phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. The character models are fantastic, the art style and them are great, the rock, despite their horrible name, are the most adorable, well-animated little creatures I've seen in a very long time. Buildings, trees, placement of props, general world design is just absolutely top tier here. I mean, as you can see with the rock, wherever you go, they go with you, hanging off trees, hiding in pots. Even when they swim, some will swim with their face down, some will swim with their face up. They've all got their own little unique characters and they're always following you, having their little charm as you explore the world. And the world is amazing. While it's a very linear game, very A to B, there are sometimes room for little paths where you'll find either a chest with a challenge or some hidden items. But... It doesn't really matter. The linearity doesn't really matter because the world's so fantastically crafted. Everything feels there for a reason. It's so gorgeous. I just walk around and just take in the environment. I mean, as you can see with this town section here, it's just gorgeous. You just want to explore. You look at it and you go, I wonder what's over there. I wonder what's over here. I wonder what's over there. And this is what I'm talking about. When I criticise Deathloop for art direction, the island feeling gamey, this is what I mean. This feels like a world. It's clearly a game. It's clearly fantasy. But it feels like an actual world where people lived. And absolute props for Amber Labs on that. The cutscenes are phenomenal. The uh, voice acting's amazing. Only weird thing with the cutscenes is they're not in engine. For some reason, they've gone for pre rendered with clear macro blocking and 24 FPS, which is very jarring. I have no idea why they've done that. But apart from that, the visual package overall is very good. Only complaint would be low res textures. And as you can see here in this scene, the game would have highly benefited from SSR being replaced with ray trace reflections. Looking at this little river bit here, you can see the reflections disappear and then reappear and when you look at the two images with it no reflections and with reflections artistically it's just two different scenes entirely so a bit disappointing there that they didn't bother to implement ray trace reflection i know that would tank performance but it would actually add to the art with that negative being said on the positive side going into dark caves you'll notice keena's staff emits a light which is a very nice little touch Music here is fantastic, the instruments are well recorded, very well mixed, fits in with the world perfectly, it's a very well made soundtrack and I would actually advise getting the mini soundtrack and the deluxe edition, because I think this is a case where the soundtrack is actually worth the extra cost alone. In terms of gameplay, it's very much feels like it's a product of the GameCube era, and I mean that in a good way, it's simple. Ember Labs, this is their first game, they clearly decided they don't want to be over ambitious, they kept their ambition in check and they've succeeded. It's very simplistic, but very solid, and with how well the world's created and how good the art style is, and how good the characters are, it, just, it works, it flows together and it's a great game. You do have some basic skill unlocks, you do have currency which you can use to buy hats full of rot. Combat is just light attack, heavy attack and you do have a parry. The parry window is incredibly small, which is surprising. It does actually take quite a bit of skill. Probably liking it window-wise to probably Metal Gear Rising. The window is absolutely tiny, and if you slip up on any difficulty above easy, you will take serious damage. Combat, while being incredibly simple, is actually incredibly difficult. This is, despite its appearance of being like a child-friendly game, difficulty-wise, it's absolutely not. This is meant to challenge people. 
and that for me personally, it's the right amount of challenge. Doesn't feel overly excessive. Doesn't feel overly easy. Medium settings, quite a good balance. Although I imagine harder difficulties for new run throughs could be quite an interesting shake up. You can also use the rot in combat for very basic attacks so far, but you do unlock extra abilities with them and the skills. And again, as I said, it's light and heavy attacks of primary focus, but you do have skills and those skills are valuable in combat. You do also have a bow and arrow, which has its uses and feels fantastic. There's also another item I'm not going to spoil. Platforming feels great. Movement feels solid. Jumping feels great. Climbing's fantastic. When I say fantastic, I know that sounds like an odd thing to say, but what I mean is there's never any issues with the camera. You never miss something you're tending to jump to. It just works. And that's what I like about this game. It's nothing special in terms of gameplay, but it just works, and it works well. Bosses are great. Very different to normal enemies. General combat feels good and can be very tense at times. Overall, very basic but solid gameplay package. Wrapped in an incredibly stunning game with a phenomenal art style. Ember Labs have kicked it out of the park here. Um, I cannot wait to see what they have next. In terms of the PC build on an NVMe SSD at 3500 megabytes a second, I have noticed some star that's not frame time related. That seems to be streaming stutter. Whether that's present in the PS5 version or not, I don't know. Loading times are generally pretty fast, two to three seconds, nothing egregious. Would like to see it a little bit faster. So, yeah, overall, absolutely loving this game. I love the rot. I love the little details in the animations. I love the way they follow you. The gameplay is completely solid in every single way. It's fun to play. There's a bit of mix of Pikmin. There's a mix of God of War. There's a mix of general 3D platforming. Kane is a brilliant protagonist. Characters are fantastic. The world building is fantastic. This is by far the best indie I've played in a very long time. Cannot recommend it enough. It's around 10 to 15 hours, depending on difficulty and how much you just want to explore the world and the little side items you can find, little hats and thing, trinkets and things like that. I have to give it an 8.5 out of 10. The uh, only thing holding it back, again, is the gameplay. It is basic and it's completely solid, but it would have been nice to see a little bit more here. But again, I completely appreciate what Ember Labs have gone for here. It is an expensive indie title, but... The quality is absolutely there to justify the cost on this occasion. Highly recommend that everyone goes and picks up and plays it now and see what you think. Fantastic indie, well done Ember Labs. I cannot wait to see what you come out with next.